Okay, thank you very much. We are back from uh, Davos and uh, we start the first panel in this uh, SciSet event. Uh, my name is Patrick Trinkler. I am CEO and co-founder of SciSec and um, I have experience in the quantum world from 2003 and uh, in 2015 we started to, to analyze this use case quantum cryptography in space. And today, uh, in our panel, we will develop a little bit this uh, quantum aspect for the cybersecurity and uh, the um, uh, um, s space use case. And the panel, we have Rania, we have um, Bruno, Piotr, and Hadrian. Uh, and Hadrian did this presentation uh, in the beginning in order to have the same level of understanding of uh, the quantum and the quantum technology. Okay, uh, I will start with uh, a small presentation of the panel and uh, Ra Rania, if you can start and present yourself, please. Thank you for the introduction. Um, so my name is Rania Tukebri. I'm a space systems engineer. I work on the architecture of spacecrafts and on the design and verification of systems and subsystems of satellites. Uh, I work uh, now with DAC Aerospace and I'm currently also developing research on quantum technology with the National Institute of uh, Space Science and Technology in, in Tunisia and as well in the University of Bremen uh, in Germany. So, and uh, I'm trying to find out the current challenges on theoretical side as well. Um, I'm also space uh, a space lawyer, let's say. Uh, I have a strategic policy background and I'm working on giving recommendations and drafting national space programs for African countries, starting from Cameroon, uh, then Sierra Leone, and maybe Karen very soon with my country, Tunisia. And I'm really glad to join this panel today. Thank you very much, uh, perfect. And uh, Piotr, just a small presentation for yourself. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Piotr Biskupski. I work in IBM as a, a security analyst. So I, my main goal and my main experience area is the cyber security, law enforcement and military. Uh, so we are supporting the analysts just building the structured and unstructured data uh, models for whatever threats you can you can imagine. And also my second position in IBM is uh, IBM Quantum Technical Ambassador responsible for the CEE country, countries. And uh, so I'm responsible for building collaboration, building cooperation between IBM Quantum and uh, the industries. Also, I'm supporting to build the use cases around the quantum. So the, as you can see, both of the, my, my, my job roles are somehow connected to the, uh, very well to this panel. So that's why I'm very happy to be part of it. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, and now the brilliant Bruno. Hello everyone, uh, and thanks for the invitation uh, to this panel. So uh, I'm uh, Bruno Sanguinetti from uh, a company called uh, Dot Photon, based in Zug, actually quite close to, to Davos. Um, what uh, my uh, current company does is it uses some quantum-inspired uh, technologies, meaning same equations as for QKD uh, and random number generation, but we focus on um, image processing for, for AI for uh, space applications. Um, my background, I, uh, I was, when I was young, I was uh, fascinated by uh, quantum computers. So I uh, worked 20 years ago in, I guess, what was kind of the, the, the mid-range of those. Um, um, and after that, I uh, joined the group of Nicolas Gisin in, uh, in Geneva for working on quantum cryptography, uh, random number generation. Um, and then I joined Didier Quantique. I worked there with Patrick. Um, many different projects, including space projects. We, we, I was happy to see that uh, Ariane's engines uh, fired successfully. Um, and recently uh, we had a, a part in that. And um, yes, so, so I'm interested in, in, in everything uh, quantum and space. Great, thank you, Bruno. Yeah, as mentioned by, um, by Bruno, um, I am a hardware engineer and uh, I 
started my career in uh, some industry in uh, in Switzerland, and after some some year, I joined this uh, venture, uh, the uh, spin-off for the University of Geneva in Quantique, in order to to be in charge of the digitalization of the technology. This was in 2003, and we develop a, a quantum random generator. Uh, a quantum key distribution system with participatory project to do some uh, quantum repeater and we have some found from the uh, European Commission or from uh, the Swiss Space Agency and from the ESA uh, European Space Agency in order to to analyze this use case in the space and we do some project around that and um, uh, I was part of uh, the another um, um, venture in China in order to, to take our technology we develop it in, uh, in Europe in order to implement it in the uh, 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 quantum channel in China in 2017 and uh, uh, in 2018 I founded uh, with a colleague uh, SciSec and uh, we have some project in the uh, uh, quantum field with uh, the uh, National uh, University of Singapore in order to uh, co implement uh, our technology and the quantum hardware developed by uh, NUS. Um, I will start with um, this panel with uh, Piotr and maybe to have uh, uh, the positioning of IBM of uh, this uh, presentation from uh, Adrian uh, and uh, Airbus. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this part. So Adrian, uh, it was very good presentation and very good insight about uh, security. Uh, my hack, my, I have a, uh, may I have a question? Uh, may I share something uh, during this panel or uh, yeah. presentation? <laughs> Absolutely, I think I check with the, uh, okay. the teams. Okay. So I will try to share something because uh, probably it will be easier to discuss this uh, having something on the on the picture. So uh, can you see my screen right now? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so as you can see, uh, some say that there is still, let's say, long way uh, to create a quantum computers that can be used in the commercially. But I want to show you something. Uh, we are a little bit closer to the reality. So IBM. Uh, is the first is a company who put his first quantum computer into the cloud in 20, in 2017 so right now we have 27 machines operational and available in IBM cloud and as you can see on this picture actually we are not only uh, putting attention onto this into the systems uh, as a hardware ones but also we are keeping the systems up and running and we are also building the software stack developer stack and all the use cases around the quantum so as you can see what we are what we expect in 2023 is actually something where we will be able to deliver the commercial uh, use cases into the into the system so actually you can see that it's not only about the hardware, but also about the overall approach, overall quantum computing and all the, if you will combine all the pieces together, you actually will be able to build the quantum advantage and make the make them easier to use by everyone. So this is also the advantage and also this is the threat uh, because how simple can be uh, using the quantum computers I will show you with the one example, which is our, in, in our software kit. Uh, we have the software kit, which is called Aqua. And uh, Ariane just mentioned during his presentations about the, the factorization. And I want to show you something. I want to show you, and this is the, the best example I, I have in my, uh, in my slides, how easy it will be to make a factorization of the number. So actually, in the Qiskit Aqua, which is our uh, software kit, you got to just do some this line and you can factorize the the the, the, the number which you will have uh, the, from from your system of course uh, the short algorithm requires number of qubits two times bigger than number of bits required to expose the factorization number but if you will go back to the to the to, the, to this part you can see that in 2023 we are about to deploy the system with uh, 1100 qubits which is the very good uh, way to 2024, where we will introduce the first million qubit devices. So as you can see, the, the path which we need to develop is actually quite, sh the, the short. this is the short time. 
And uh, so that's why we develop also behind the quant beside the quantum, the second uh, idea, which is confidential computing. So the confidential computing is uh, the way how you can protect the sensitive data and you can use them uh, no matter of the environment when you are working. Uh, also, you can collaborate with partners to building the, new, the, the, the solutions. And uh, one thing which is, which is important, this is the possibility to create a new algorithms. So some kind of crypto agility, and you can just build a system hardware ready, which where you can imp imp uh, let's say implement easily the quantum safe uh, algorithms, quantum safe cryptography algorithms. So right now in our IBM cloud, we built the system which is using the hardware security modules, which are based uh, of our uh, service, which is called Hyper Protect C uh, Cloud Service, where you can actually use the two different approaches, like a quantum safe uh, TLS key protection, where you can use the Kyber, where you can use the, um, let's say, hybrid models of, of encryption. So actually, you can see that our goal is changing this, this, our, this approach into the more ag agile approach. And next part, which we are working, is actually uh, creating the fully homomorphic encryption systems where uh, the, 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 the data will be encrypted in the full time of processing. So not only the sending the data into the processing or into the cloud or into the satellite, but also the, the system is, will be able to process inside the, the the full system without decrypting gig. So the owner is encrypting the data. It will uh, the the platform will perform uh, encrypted computation, and then owners will unlock the data and just see the results. So actually, the full pass from network through processing going back to the to the users will be fully encrypted. And actually, which is which is uh, uh, extremely important. You can have an access to this one, to this platform, because we have an SDK and the toolkits for a couple of systems. And one thing which is important for us, uh, we are we know one uh, one thing that you are in the quantum world, you are not able to work alone. So you need to build a quantum network. You need to collaborate with uh, with others. So that's why we have a couple of programs, of course, around the education and training, but also. We are running accelerated research around the quantum, so the quantum key distribution and also post-quantum uh, cryptography. And also we are helping to develop the applications uh, for, for our customers. So actually, uh, this, is the, this is the way how IBM is trying to collaborate uh, inside the networks. And of course, all the aspects which Adrian shows during his presentations are extremely uh, important for us. And those are the areas where IBM research is putting their effort to solve those issues before something, let's say, bad happens with our data with, uh, in, inside our systems. Great, thank you very much. I think it's a very good um, uh, development. Uh, and uh, I if I can resume, resume it, it is that, uh, uh, yes, uh, with the evolution uh, we see with uh, the impact of the evolution uh, did by, by uh, IBM, we have it ready, it is uh, uh, quantum computer, it is quantum cloud, and uh, with this quantum cloud we develop a lot of things, but we can use it in order to hack traditional infrastructure. And uh, uh, as we see uh, last year, there are some uh, hackers that will use it in order to hack uh, massively uh, some, uh, some enterprise like uh, solar winds uh, and, uh, uh, and that's with the power the hacker we have with this quantum computer. And the other way for mitigate this risk, there are different options, is uh, um, uh, quantum cryptography, as mentioned by Adrian, is difficult to integrate right now in the stack uh, they have in the, uh, the cloud infrastructure, post-quantum is more easy to integrate it, and they are not only, we can combine the post-quantum and the quantum key uh, distribution, distribution system with a trusted execution environment for the confidential computing, and in the hand, maybe to have homomorphic encryption with a completely data encrypted. And that, 
for the confidential computing is uh, more easy integrated for the stack you have right now, and the future uh, homomorphic encryption will be the great uh, solution. They, and as mentioned by Priot, they have, we need to have all different options and to have this agility to implement it. And my, my idea right now is to discuss with Bruno because they are some other uh, aspect of uh, the uh, evolution of the quantum technology and the uh, uh, company of uh, Bruno uh, developed it and uh, to propose it uh, commercial right now. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, hi everyone. Uh, so indeed, it's it's uh, it's interesting to 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 see what the near future will bring for quantum technologies. But I, I wanted to make everyone also aware that uh, there are some technologies that that, that uh, have their background in uh, quantum physics and are actually being used right now. And uh, three of them that uh, I'm aware of is first of all is is random number generation. So of course, uh, the, the, the key to cryptography is always, uh, well, the key, so which, which, which has to be random. And if you look at many, many practical attacks, uh, uh, many uh, backdoors in systems uh, that have been found, they, a lot of them have been not with the actual algorithm, but with the key. Um, so, and random numbers, which are of a quantum origin, can be uh, much safer. Uh, than, than ones which are generated classically. And right now, uh, I think there are about uh, seven digit numbers of, of, of these uh, 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 random number generators that are currently in use uh, and which serve millions of, 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 of users. Uh, in particular, uh, we developed one uh, with Patrick as well that is used now on, on, on mobile phones from, from Samsung and so on. So when you establish a connection in Korea, uh, that's with, uh, with uh, a quantum random number. Um, the second technology, which is, which is inspired by, uh, again, quantum physics that is, is already being used is the, the compression that um, uh, my company uh, commercializes. Um, so it uses the same, in fact, if you look at what happens in an optical fiber, uh, you know, you have photons that go uh, from an emitter to a receiver. And when you're looking at an image, that's exactly what happens. You have photons that go from your Earth to your satellite. Uh, and what you can do is if you really understand the entropy of that light, uh, then you can compress it a lot better. And, and currently we manage to do so uh, to compress the data five times better and five times faster and with five times less power. And this, of course, it's, it's uh, uh, it's used already and, and, and we have already uh, many customers that, that, uh, that make use of that. And these solutions are needed because since uh, 2011, more or less, uh, the, the exponential growth in classical computer power and in uh, storage that had been going on since 1950, more or less, has stopped. So, you know, Intel is on 14 nanometers as they were then. Uh, uh, storage, we are in the same situation. And so this maybe brings me to, to, to a question to the, to the panel, is that we are in a period of transition where an investment in classical technologies uh, suddenly have become so expensive that even big companies like Intel, maybe they would have a solution to go to seven nanometers, five nanometers, but they're just commercially maybe not feasible. So, so, so technically there have been some demonstrations but to go forward classically just is not possible. And uh, of course, there's been billions of dollars invested in those classical technologies. And so my question is, and, and how much ever money has been invested in, in quantum technologies is still absolutely tiny with respect to the amount of money that has been invested in those classical ones. And so my question is, as soon as we see that that money now starts to be invested in quantum technologies. And there have been some large investments uh, 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 recently, uh, especially in the US, uh, but also in Europe and, and, and in China. Um, when that money shifts into developing quantum technologies, then that's when we expect a very rapid acceleration. Um, so my question to the panel is, when do you expect that to be and how do you expect that transition to happen? Ah, great. Thank you. Good question. I think, um, Hadrian, if uh, you can have develop a little bit uh, this, uh, this question from uh, uh, Bruno and maybe uh, to, to 
update uh, your analysis uh, you did in your presentation from the feedback of uh, Piotr. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so first to 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 answer uh, Piotr, um, I think it's very wise uh, from your company to invest uh, simultaneously in in the quantum computer and in solutions to um, enforce privacy, confidentiality uh, beyond beyond the I mean post um, quantum in the post quantum era. Um, and uh, uh, that is wise, and that is probably um, a rule for survival. So I can only salute that, and I hope we we, we can work together on this. We are not um, quantum uh, computing um, engineers at Airbus. We are users of, of quantum computers, and uh, potentially uh, from the security uh, perspective, uh, we are also victims of the quantum computers. So a very nice move. Um, I'm definitely interested into finding also uh, what is uh, realistically uh, done in, in uh, homomorphic encryption, which is also another field of, of interest. Um, regarding uh, uh, Bruno's uh, question um, about investment and when, when the tipping point would be uh, where the investment shifts um, from traditional computing and, and traditional uh, cryptography, for example, or other security techniques uh, to, to quantum. My, my opinion is that the tipping point has already occurred. And it, it might be a bit uh, controversial, but my opinion is that they Chinese experiment of 2016 is the tipping point, is the point when uh, all the, even the national agencies that had claimed, uh, you know, that quantum communication was not something uh, relevant or credible uh, uh, within the coming 15 years, they all have had to reassess their, their position uh, they don't do it uh, quite openly at the moment because, I mean, it's, it's always difficult to, to bring uh, a technical um, uh, thought into, into political positioning. But uh, the tipping point, from my perspective, has occurred. And uh, that is essentially when even the security, the traditional security players that uh, were so much attached to uh, computational cryptography uh, um, have decided that they should invest in there. Great, thank you. Uh, Rania, maybe um, you can add some, uh, you can hand rest to Bruno and uh, uh, to develop uh, around the geopolitics aspect uh, of the quantum and the space. Yes, uh, well, uh, this is quite interesting and, and just hearing from uh, experts from cybersecurity itself and quantum is very also uh, interesting because now trying to understand a little bit how things were going on since the beginning on on the you know the the evolution of the cybersecurity and as well on space and on quantum itself is a bit uh, is a bit um, how to say uh, influential a lot because it it has a, a lot of political and geopolitical aspects and influence for the strength of the every country. So trying to resume a little bit how things were going for the cybersecurity. So we were in the beginning trying to work on a, an unaware uh, side of cybersecurity. We were unable to defend ourselves to cyber attacks. Then we tried to be a little bit more reactive by trying to adapt and locate the issues and trying to, to react to it in without a very proactive way. Then we tried to use another third level of proactivity, go into a more how we call the anticipatory uh, way. And then at the end, we have the AI, artificial intelligence and the SOAR solutions where we are able to uh, uh, anticipate the error and try to understand what will be the future challenge of cybersecurity. So here you can understand that we are going a fast way, a fast speed in a way that many countries like for example china as you have seen has already invested a lot on that side and they have already chose quantum to accelerate this uh, power and to accelerate this access to space to privacy to data and uh, if you follow a little bit the strategies that they have been following like since 1970s and the creation uh, the, the first
satellite, uh, the Baidu satellite, uh, on, on how it, it affected a lot of the geopolitical uh, goals, and also on the creation of what they want to make the, the space station manned, the first space manned station from one country, and also what they want to create with the Mishu satellite uh, that has already uh, trying to, to test the level of quantum, um, uh, the, the, the eff efficiency of quantum uh, satellites, and at the end to create this network of quantum satellites uh, using quantum of internet. So they have invested a lot. When you try, unfortunately, I don't have really um, a presentation just to show you because this is quite uh, impressive. So I have seen the, the um, presentation from Adrian and I like the way when he said that they have actually affected the, the arrogance of the Western word when because they are showing now a very advanced uh, way of uh, studying the quantum case and studying uh, the post quantum cryptography and the quantum key distribution solutions and and they are trying to use both at the same level and trying even to find out more standardization on that side uh, well also coming from a technical background i can see that there is still a lot of challenges still there so in terms of atmospheric interference in terms of the quantum computers error correction itself. And I can see here, so the the country and or here we talk more about private sector that is making a bigger step on that side. So the one that will be able to solve these issues to, and to implement a real practical solutions for the military uses, okay, military is a bit advanced, but also for the other use of finance or healthcare, um, these are the persons that will have a more dominance on the geopolitical side. And of course, uh, we don't have to forget that other countries should also take part of this. So I think now you know that BRICS countries are already involved, which are the Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. And surprisingly, a lot of African countries started already making this step. You know, uh, many um, universities started making this. I think IBM uh, also is supporting this. Right, and uh, I think it's with the uh, Wanda University, I, I believe, in Morocco as well, University of Rabat, uh, several ones. So here, just to show you that, uh, as I have heard here, so we have to build this uh, backbone network in order to develop the quantum on private side and also on a governmental side. Great, thank you very much. Uh, I have some question from uh, the auditorium, and uh, it's for you, Piotr. Um, it's about uh, homomorphic uh, encryption and about uh, the um, uh, the uh, evolution of the standardization and certification around homomorphic encryption and uh, uh, quantum encryption. Do you have any idea around that? So uh, the, the, the homomorphic encryption is one of the parts where our IBM research is working and there is there are no certifications uh, right now in ongoing progress. Right now we are waiting for a certification for the for our uh, crystals uh, post quantum encryption. So this is the Kyber for uh, key exchange and the signature for the lithium. So actually this is those are the, the areas where we are the IBM is extremely active. Uh, around this one, but I have fully homomorphic encryption actually will use the algorithm which we will uh, imply from the it, it can be classical uh, encryption algorithm, it can be post quantum, so it doesn't matter in the, in this case. It's more like a full flow of the data from the from the user to the system and going back. And I want to just uh, put some uh, some comments on the on Adrian uh, statement about the uh, how IBM is working with the. Uh, with the system. So actually, you mentioned in during your talk about the supremacy, and this is something which I uh, don't think is uh, worth to uh, work on that. Because for me, the quantum is more like achieving advantage. So the problems which are uh, easy solvable by the classical computers still can go to the classical computers and no problem with that. But you need something like a uh, run times uh, in the system where the problem, which is quantum friendly, will be de deployed on the quantum device. If there will be a, something which is uh, easier to solve uh, using the HPC, let's send it to the uh, to the to the classical computer. So this is our approach. And also about the uh, to, to Bruno about the investment. Uh, maybe you you noticed that IBM uh, already is away from Intel systems. Uh, we are not developing hardware as much as we did. 
So there are two main components in IBM uh, hardware, which we are building, which is a mainframe, probably you know those systems. And the second one is the quantum devices. And right now we are trying to create a big quantum uh, system, which will handle 1100 qubits in the, in the single system. So right now we are building the free, the super fridge, for example, because our uh, our quantum machine is working on the superconducting qubits. Uh, so we need to cool them down into twelve uh, into into a couple of hundreds of uh, kelvins. So actually, right now we are building the big fridge, which is uh, three meters tall and uh, almost one and a half meter wide. So this is what we are doing. And also to, uh, to, to Rania about the, how we are working with the countries. I have something like this. This is a KISS kit. This is our open source platform where everyone can play. Everyone can just have a connection to the quantum devices. He can just do his own uh, experiments on the, on the quantum devices. And this is, our, this is our goal, to create a big network of people who are using the, the KISS kit, who are using our software kit, which actually doesn't, it's not only working with IBM hardware, it's also working with other hardware. So actually, this is something uh, which is open, it's free of charge. You have the use cases around the cybersecurity, around the optimization, around the machine learning, AI, and so on. So, that this is the this is the moment where IBM is extremely heavily investing into the quantum uh, infrastructure and culture. I would say. Thank you, Piotr. Bruno, you are happy with the answers from the panel? Um, yes, I'm. I, I am actually. It was uh, very interesting to to have your insights, um, and so so I also uh, have uh, another question is that in the um, what's your uh, vision between the, the the quantum safe algorithms that however like my understanding is that they they can be um, uh, they can be shown to be most likely secure but there, there can't be a proof uh, like the the, 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 the classical uh, algorithms there can't be a proof that they are secure it's just that they're probably secure and uh, uh, with respect to also uh, quantum cryptography, um, so so is there like are you ex as Rania mentioned? So China is are exploring both ways and, and probably even running both algorithms one on top of the other. Uh, is there a strategy uh, for the um, uh, done by Airbus and IBM on on on, on this side on this side of things, Adrian? Well, um, uh, first of all, there, there's a, a very embarrassing problem in, in quantum and non-quantum uh, security. That is uh, what we what we call uh, quantum safe. Uh, still, is, is probabilistic, and I mean, of course, the secret is guaranteed in 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 true quantum communication. But uh, what is not guaranteed is that it will pass through. And that is an important aspect uh, because of error rates, because of the probabilistic nature of, of, of quantum uh, physics, um, uh, opposed to deterministic nature of, of classical computing to be discussed, but uh, <laughs> at least pretended um, uh, deterministic. So it will be a challenge uh, to prove anything indeed. Um, and they, uh, well, Personally, I assimilate quantum safe to, to post-quantum uh, cryptography because this is um, indeed an, an approach through safety and it's, it's applicable uh, to, uh, let's say, safety critical applications where it is more important to, to ensure the integrity and the availability um, of the communication than to ensure its uh, everlasting uh, secrecy, uh, if, you, if you wish. So um, that also takes me to uh, um, an answer to uh, Rania's points on governmental, non-governmental uses. Um, uh, when I started discussing about use cases for quantum communication in particular, it was always um, pointed out that Potentially, only governments would have interest in, in such a strong security. 
And uh, then I got to 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 military uh, stakeholders, and it it was told everywhere the military will never use this, um, particularly for for quantum key distribution. Um, and and a good reason for that is if you're addressing tactical problems uh, where somehow you need a secret for uh, the determine the lapse of time, you don't need it to be super secret forever, you need it secret for the moment of the action. Then um, at the moment with the current implementations, you should not go for, for, for quantum communication. Um, it is not effective in time critical uh, uh, communication. There's a lot of requirement for it to work. So it is more uh, addressing the, the need of information security. So it could um, equally apply to some state secrets that are long lasting secrets, uh, more, stra more strategic level than tactical level, if you, if you wish. Uh, and it will apply also to, for example, a banking secret, which is also very long lasting and doesn't need time critical uh, implementation. Uh, so I think they, um, it is a mistake to believe that the division will be between governmental and non-governmental. And if you look at the Chinese implementation, they have been wise enough to open it to use cases for banking, for example, uh, which um, in, in a first thought we, we had not considered in, in use cases for uh, quantum communication. Um, yeah, Perfect. did I answer the, the question? Thank you. And uh, Rainia, you have an update uh, to do uh, around that? Okay, here um, I, I agree on this, but actually here I still believe that we should both start developing this on equal side. So we have the, the solution, the quantum key distribution, the fully secrecy and high cost solution. And we have the other one, which is a quantum key distribution, uh, quantum um, post quantum cryptography, which is a quantum encryption for all for the masses, if I may say. So um, if you just try to think how we will implement this, there is different and you try to, to, to check the ways of comparison of these two methods, you will see that there is a difference in the security on the implementation, the communication of me in, in the media, uh, the cost, the repeater compatibility. Uh, the, the digital signature compatibility and so on. So here, when you try to see, okay, now I, I know that uh, the, the post-quantum cryptography has been quite well advanced yet, but the quantum key distribution is still a solution that we have to, to implement. Um, like as, as a systems engineer, I always say, so we should really try to understand the system as an overall of a hardware, software, and network. So we should try to make these three elements working together and secure. So, and, and true, so our topic today is quantum, but I also still consider other kind of failure and errors that can be even uh, in unintentional. So here we should really start to think how to make this hardware side also as secure as the net network it is. So, uh, and, and also, um, Still, so here I'm really glad that we are, we're making this panel because many people are still considering quantum not really a real solution. We should really make it implemented in 2050 or more. So we need really now to really start kind of raising awareness of the usage of quantum technology and to start making the infrastructure built from now and to build up the standardization. So this is my humble opinion. Thank you. Uh, yes, we have uh, the last 10 minutes of this panel and my idea is uh, to maybe to close this panel with uh, uh, the, some some vision for each person of the panel of the the next uh, the evolution of the quantum technology and the uh, um, space use case. I will start with uh, Piotr. Uh, you have two minutes to develop your vision and uh, your uh, of the quantum technologies. I just want to go back a little bit for a second to the uh, conversation we have uh, before this one. So Please. I want to just say, yeah, I, I want to say one thing about the uh, the IBM approach to the to this uh, post quantum encryption. We already implemented the post quantum encryption 
be uh, in our uh, IBM cloud. So actually, you already can choose from our services uh, the post quantum encryption. We did not wait for a NIST to make a standardization for that, and we are ready to deploy the key protect. We are delivering the containerization, uh, the cloud shield, cloud data shield uh, so service where you can uh, secure the container containers and uh, Kubernetes platform and create kind of enclave, uh, secure enclave for that. So this is our our approach to this one. And uh, when we are talking about the quantum key distribution, IBM is uh, IBM Research is working on that. And but most uh, mostly we are collaborating with the startups, and this is also our uh, initiative. So, so we right now together for together with the Jagiellonian Uni University, we are collaborating with the, one of the startups, and the name is a Quantum Cosmolab where we are working closely with them with the quantum key distribution uh, into the satellites. But we found one thing which uh, makes, uh, it, it always makes me smile because he said that the guy who is running this one is my, my very good friend, uh, Kuba Milcharek. He said once that uh, when we have the having the co communication in between the satellite and the earth, there is a very big possibility to have a DDoS attack done by the cloud it was quite uh in in my opinion it was, it was quite quite funny uh but uh this is also the way how we as an ibm collaborating with the uh with the companies and the startups who are uh interesting heavily with the quantum key distribution and uh, encryption so this it was just a comment for the the, the statement and for the for the conversation before the the last part great and your vision of the next step did it come to technology? I think the quantum is quantum is the future. Uh, we will not be able to run from the quantum. So actually, everyone can need to invest the time, skills, developers, and uh, deliver the, the quantum technology and also secure their system using the post quantum encryption. So again, I agree totally with Rania. Both ways are important for all of us. Thank you. And uh, Bruno, your vision of the evolution of quantum technology and uh, your uh, vision of uh, development of your company? <laughs> so, yeah, indeed. So, so, so my vision is that uh, a classical technology, whether it is in encryption, where is it is in, in, in processing, where it is in storage, uh, is really reaching its limits. So, uh, for example, if you buy, if you want to now buy a GPU or CPU, you have like six months waiting lists. You know, so people, there's a lot of demand for enhanced processing, enhanced storage. And so, my personal vision is that uh, I I, uh, I still see the 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 actual quantum computers being broadly used and available a, a few years off. But in the meantime, we can already use some some quantum concepts and really understanding uh, how quantum physics works for communication, even classical communication, understanding how uh, uh, single photon uh, communication works can also speed up your, your optical links, for example, in uh, free satellites. Um, uh, and there are some, some demonstrations of that. Uh, we can uh, use concepts such as the one we have for image compression that allows for, for, for storage and uh, AI processing to be more performant. So you need less actual classical hardware. And so and my vision is that these intermediate applications will really uh, are the tipping point. So it means they are applica applications that one can do now and one can make money now with them. Uh, even like small companies uh, like ours. Uh, and so I expect that from now on, there will be this very rapid acceleration where more and more people get interested in quantum and work with quantum systems. Um, so I expect really some, uh, some big, uh, big changes in the next few years. Great. Thank you very much, Bruno. Rani, uh, no, sorry, Adrian, your uh, vision of the evolution of the quantum technology and maybe the uh, space use case. Yeah, so uh, you might have found that um, I, I am quite attached to to the idea that uh, both uh, PQC and um, QKD will be uh, of, of paramount importance uh, with different timescales, but also potentially some combinations. And uh, when we think about combinations, because they have completely different um, advantages and drawbacks, uh, we have to think uh, about how to ensure end-to-end -end security. I mean, getting back to, 
two basic uh, security principles. How do you have end-to-end -end security through systems that uh, are a mix of quantum and non-quantum uh, elements? Uh, so that, that, that will be my focus and it needs to be solved by architectural uh, security measures, I expect. Uh, then uh, regarding the uh, interesting geopolitical aspects, I, I think we have to be very careful about the disruption that this move towards quantum is, is going to make because uh, such technological uh, disruptions are the times when um, cars are being redistributed uh, among the industry, among uh, the, the countries, among, you know, uh, in the globe. And uh, particularly if you think about quantum communication, uh, the, the real quantum communication uh, promise, it, it will also redistribute uh, power between the terrestrial and the space segment. I, I expect a lot, uh, in particular towards space. Um, that would be my guess. And space will uh, probably also um, be more favorable to countries that have less legacy um, infrastructure. We have to think about this. Uh, it, it's not by, by chance that China is, is now leading quantum communication and potentially some other uh, areas of the world that are um, uncovered by, by um, terrestrial infrastructure will also take a lead in this uh, game. Great, thank you very much. Rania, you will uh, have the time in order to close this panel and uh, to develop your region of the quantum technology and the space use case. Thank you. Um, okay, the first thing to say is here, the perception of the non-urgency of the quantum is a real barrier to quantum technology development, because this means that there won't be enough investment in quantum solutions, either the post-crypto, uh, uh, post-quantum cryptography or the quantum key distribution. My um, my idea or my recommendations my next for, for the next period is maybe, to, as I mentioned, to raise awareness about the importance of usage of, of these two solutions and the implementation of them in parallel uh, and, and trying to understand which part, which, which technology will serve for which need. So this is the first thing we need to think about while strategically speaking. And also, um, as Adrian mentioned, we need to think a lot about the legal side and about the implementation of a clear uh, strategy and a clear policies to, to the, to the uh, quantum protocols and quantum communication. And also involving the, the, the main centers for the uh, standardization for every single move implementation, the industry side, just to have things clear from the beginning, just to avoid having any kind of issues while developing it and while um, uh, implementing it in governmental and non-governmental side as well. Um, maybe as well, I always say that the quantum key distribution um, should be taken in consideration as much as the, the other solution as well, because it has it's a fully secure one. It's the perfect option for the persons that want to secure their data and to, to either to have a geopolitical influence or just to secure their data simply for the uses of, of the, the citizens. But um, so this actually will push us maybe to engage more um, countries, more cities to, to create this backbone network as, as uh, IBM is trying to do. And this is quite perfect now. So we need maybe to um, you all need to, to push maybe more the research and coming from academia, I can tell you that we haven't even implemented like 20% of the, the protocols we are trying to, uh, to make for quantum uh, communication and also quantum key distribution side. So these are mainly my, my points and, and I thank you for, for, the, for being in this panel. Ah, great, thank you very much. And uh, it was a pleasure to to participate to this panel and uh, we have real, you developed real uh, some uh, um, positioning with a lot of quality and uh, uh, I think we will close this panel and um, Matthew, what is the next step of 37th? Thank you so much, Patrick. Thank you to, uh, to the, all the panelists. We are right on time. What a moderator uh, we have. Thank you guys, uh, great content. Uh, quantum was one of the hot topics uh, we wanted to cover at uh, SISAT. Uh, and the next one that we'll be tackling this afternoon uh, is cloud. Cloudification, cloud computing, cloud storage, uh, moving to the cloud, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, 
all these uh, technologies uh, that space players are currently uh, looking at very seriously. We'll be talking about that this afternoon with the speaker lineup uh, starting at 2 p.m., uh, kicking off with uh, Giovanni Pendolfi from Leaf Space. Then we'll have Enrique Fraga from GMV, <coughs> following up uh, by uh, Akash Patel from Microsoft, and then uh, Susan Linden and Christian Rückregel from CGI. Um, lunch break is now. Uh, we, we, uh, we go on break for an hour. We get back live from Davos at 2 o'clock talking about cloud, and then uh, we'll uh, wrap up the day with a panel discussion on cloud moderated by Alexander Karloff that uh, you saw this morning. Uh, thank you so much for participating, for being thank with you. us today. All the technical mishaps of this morning are behind. Now we'll be cruising to the, to the rest of the event. Thanks a lot to the tech team uh, here in Davos. Uh, uh, go, go, go for lunch, uh, write a couple of emails, and then come back at 2 o'clock to talk about uh, cloud. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.